Then I was shipped out. We were in a man-sized war. First I saw of it was a place called Omaha. And I don't mean Nebraska. It was a beach off Normandy. June 6, 1944, it uh, wasn't a nice place for swimming. After that, the days kind of got telescoped. We slugged and the enemy slugged back. We slugged harder. That's where we smashed the best the Nazi could put up. After that, we drove on through France, pushing him over wherever he stood up to fight. August 25th. This was Paris. And the French had been waiting for their big day for five long years. Because Paris had become a symbol. The rest of the world had been waiting too. We were there, of course. One whole division all spruced up. Yep, we were there, all right. But not for long. We marched through Paris and right out again. You see, we had an appointment to keep. We kept it. Still war. The enemy wasn't folding yet. He was fighting small-scale actions to hold us while he pulled back to regroup. Whole batches were willing to do their regrouping in our POW cages. scraps, we were still getting the Paris treatment. But after the treatment, there'd always be another hassle. Town to take, a river to cross. started grinding out that old line. Home for Christmas. It made no sense, but men will believe anything they want to believe. I said we were moving fast. You know what? We were moving too fast. Too fast for supply to keep up with us. We had only one port, Cherbourg. Manpower, ammo, gas. Everything had to reach us from that distance. We 
needed the great Belgian port of Antwerp. But the Nazi knew that, too, and held on to it. The war had just about destroyed France's railroads and rolling stock. And so from Cherbourg and even those Normandy beaches where we'd landed, trucks had to haul everything we needed. Top-ranked planning had figured on an October offensive, but the supply problem was going to delay that final knockout punch. Weeks later, Antwerp was ours, but the enemy still denied us the use of its port. Beyond Antwerp, we got our first setback. An airborne attack that was going to outflank the enemy and take us right into central Germany was stopped cold. Niemegen ended talk about a quick finish to the war. Niemegen ended rumors about getting home for Christmas. All of those weeks our buildup had gone on. Still meant hauling from Cherbourg and the beaches, but. Now we had a super speed system. It was called the Red Ball Express. And to get us set for an all-out offensive, it worked round the clock. And one day there was an unscheduled meeting at a place called Mons. slugfest at Bones had knocked off two Nazi armies. More important, it had opened the way to the German city of Aachen. We'd already moved into the enemy's home grounds, where they lay on our side of the Siegfried line, or weren't important enough to defend. But this was going to be a real showdown. We'd have to blast them out of Aachen. And that's what we did. signals and the big blast was on. The Rhineland felt it first. Between us and the Rhineland stretched that Siegfried line. Its entire length still intact except where we'd crashed through it at Aachen. The enemy orders called for a stand or die fight against the foreign invaders. That was us. Assault by air could only soften. The rest was up to us. The going was rougher than we'd figured. stand and you don't want to die, well, there's always a third way. Now we went after our biggest target so far, the fortress city of Metz.
Maybe we forgot our manners with the latest batch of Nazis who forgot to stand or die. But Mets hadn't been easy. Nothing was going to be easy anywhere along our lines. For the Nazi Wehrmacht was tough. good men. Green replacements were becoming seasoned old soldiers almost overnight. Then there was good news from Belgium. Antwerp was working for us at last. The enemy had been knocked out of the skies and from the islands surrounding the big port. Shortages of ammo, gas, equipment weren't going to limit our movements again. things we needed were coming in. But those weeks we'd lost were going to help hand us our heaviest jolt. For now it was winter. Once upon a time, armies just stopped fighting when winter hit. Winter slowed down movement. Winter meant additional hardship. But we couldn't give up the initiative. We had to go on. He had been counting on winter weather, and he knew just where he could make it pay off. In the middle of our line, stretching about 85 miles, was the Ardennes Forest. To its north, we had two divisions. There were two more in the south. We were using the Ardennes as a combined training and rest area. The Nazi knew that, too. His tanks and forces had been massed under tightest security in concealed areas. Now he lashed out. It was a now or never gamble. With his dwindling reserves of equipment and toughened veterans from the Russian campaigns, he aimed to split us in two and drive on to retake Antwerp. Once again, the natives were leaving their farms with everything they could carry. The Nazi planning didn't include rations. They were that desperate. They'd live off the land till they could stock up from our warehouses at Liège and Reims. That's where he headed. Punching a bulge into our thinly held line. Outside a little town nobody'd ever heard of, named Bastogne, we dug in. The Bastogne commanded the highways to those cities. We dug in and held 24 hours a day while we waited for relief. There weren't any more cooks company clerks, bakers, only fighting men. Maybe a few managed some holiday spirit, but for most of us it was just another day on the job, a soldier's job. The job was going to get tougher, and so was the weather.
Communications were disrupted. Supply lines cut. Contact between units was lost. And there were units that were lost, too. There was no telling where the enemy had been or where he was going to be. He'd even infiltrated with specially trained fighters. They wore our uniform and spoke our language. So we asked trick questions. Who won the World Series? What was Betty Grable's last film? That did it. And because they were spies, did for them too. The weather had been on the enemy's side, but time was on ours, so we held on. Then one beautiful day, oh, never mind the weather, a whole armored division from 3rd Army broke through to relieve us. The enemy's bid for fast stone was ended. Now we could get back on the offensive. still hit us for losses, but the steam was gone from his counterpunch. He could delay us, but that's all. The bulge was shrinking fast. The Wehrmacht's strength was melting, and so were the snow and ice that had helped. The thaws could slow us down, but the break in weather brought another kind of break. skies brought us air support. Units that couldn't be reached over truck routes, units cut off by enemy action could now get rations. Medical supply, equipment of all kinds by airdrop. More important, Air action could help us smash resistance and help pitch the Nazi back onto his own soil. Besides the ones who hot-footed it back to the fatherland to fight another day, there were the lucky ones who wouldn't. Then again, there were the unlucky ones who couldn't. we'd won our battle. The Battle of the Bulge. And now we just get on with the job of soldiering. There'd be towns to take, we took. Then there'd be a river called the Rhine. We crossed it. <laughs> 